Okay, so this is a really interesting topic right here. Now, I know Rangers fans, you're probably super enthusiastic to get into this YouTube channel talking about your hockey team, especially after the comments I made the other day talking about Ryan Reeves and how you guys pretty much acquired him because you wanted to have that Tom Wilson antidote. Either way, though, we're talking today about a different aspect of the Rangers lineup, and it comes to us in the form of the goaltenders right here. Now, we know how the Rangers goaltending situation has been. For years, it's been Henrik Lundqvist, the king himself, manning the crease and doing his thing. He's an absolute legend, maybe a Hall of Famer, first ballot maybe, who really knows? But his hockey playing career has been nothing short of phenomenal. However, he has gotten older, which is why, as time has gone on, the Rangers have addressed the goaltending situation by acquiring other names. Guys like Alexander Georgiev stepping into the roster, Igor Shashurkin finally making his way over to the NHL after being drafted all those years ago. You have yourselves a goaltending situation in New York now that's a lot more youthful and just, in general, a lot more poised for the future. Lundqvist was great, but Lundqvist is now old. And so with the emergence of Igor Shashurkin this year, the guy went out there in 35 games played, had a 2.62 goals against, and a 9.16 save percentage, the best statistical goaltender on the Rangers this season, we had ourselves some other discussions going around the team involving the other guy. As we mentioned, Alexander Georgiev is the de facto backup in the New York Rangers system, statistically in terms of games played, as well as in terms of the all-around numbers. Georgiev, despite the fact that he is also a pretty young guy, He's 25 years old. Take a look at where Igor Shashurkin is. That guy's 25 too. You have yourselves what is a little bit of a discussion to be had about where exactly the Rangers go with Georgiev. Which is why when Frank Saravelli of DailyFaceOff.com, yeah, he's the guy who spoiled the Seattle expansion draft and a former TSN insider, posted this article the other day, a lot of Rangers fans had a really interesting response to one of the names included on this trade targets list. Let's review the article right here. It says that all eyes are on Jack Eichel, as well as Seth Jones. It's a typical list-style article where they go over different names in the National Hockey League and talk about their trade status, why they're in a position where a lot of people are saying they could be traded. And if you scroll all the way down to the 28th player right here on the list, you can see Alexander Georgiev's name on the list. Let's take a look at what it says over here. The article was updated as recently as July 29th, so three days ago. Sources say that Alexander Georgiev placed a trade request with the Rangers a while back, hoping to break out from the shadow of Igor Shashurkin. The Rangers have sought a first-round pick for him, but that won't be happening. Not after the return for Alex Nedeljkovic set the market price. And not if teams do their homework on Georgiev, who wasn't exactly known as a favorite teammate on Broadway. And this is a really somewhat cryptic way of going about it, labeling him in a way that says, okay, first off, it says he placed a trade request. Second off, it says the Rangers wanted a first, but it's not going to happen like that because of the Nadelkovic trade. And thirdly, it's talking about how Georgiev isn't really that great of a teammate. Now, this is all, of course, speculation. It's just insider information going out there being leaked in the form of a Daily Faceoff article right here. But Alexander Georgiev, trade request or nah? That's a really interesting idea that I wanted to honestly talk about a few days ago when it came out on this article right here. But of course, a few of the other aspects of this little piece are interesting to note as well. The Nendelkovich trade setting the market price really kind of got a good chuckle out of me because, as I said before, if you've seen this YouTube channel, you know that I'm a Red Wings guy. I like the Red Wings, they're my third favorite team, and seeing the Alex Nedeljkovich trade go down where Bernier and a third, or excuse me, the negotiation rights to Jonathan Bernier, not even Bernier himself, these assets were sent away for... A guy who was third in Calder voting this year, a guy that absolutely carried the Carolina Hurricanes into the playoffs, and even though he was statistically poor against the Lightning, still had a really good playoff run, analytically speaking. I was like, yeah, that's a fantastic trade for Detroit. Iserman said it himself, man. You're going to have to ask the Hurricanes why they were comfortable doing a trade like that. And because that's the trade that we had to set the market for what is essentially younger goaltenders who are somewhat unproven. I mean, Georgiev had himself a few seasons in the NHL, and Nadelkovich had one full season in the NHL. It's not proven like a Darcy Kemper or whatever, a guy who was able to fetch a great haul from Joe Sackick in the Avalanche. 
So for Georgiev going out there in a position where maybe the Rangers, if they wanted to trade him, they would have gotten a first round pick if they had to choose. Yeah, that world isn't really an existing world anymore, unfortunately speaking. But hey, doesn't really matter, doesn't it? Because when it comes to Georgiev and the entire trade request situation, we had ourselves this tweet made by Vince Mercogliano. He says this, I just got off the phone with Alexander Georgiev's agent, Mike Liut, who unequivocally denied that a trade request has been made. It's not true, he says. There isn't anything to it. Does that mean the Rangers have not shopped Georgiev? No. But Liut says they have not asked to be moved. Merko Gliana, by the way, is a Rangers reporter for USA Today, for a few other outlets, so he is a reputable source in this situation here. But just going out there and contradicting the entire Daily Faceoff article right here, that's what the agent for Georgiev has done. By the way, Mike Liut, everybody kind of remembers him, right? Yeah, old former goaltender in the NHL. Nice stuff right there. So the story takes a little bit of a turn for the unexpected right here. After we get the word from Sarah Vailey that, yeah, Georgiev is out there, he requested a trade because Igor Shashurkin is going to be the guy in the Big Apple and he does not want to live in that shadow, the agent comes out and says, no, we haven't requested a trade. What are you talking about? There isn't anything to that article right there that Sarah Vailey wrote. And as a result, we had ourselves a few responses saying, okay, well, what happened? Sarah Vailey, man, what's going on here? Why did you report that there was this entire thing going on here when... The agent said no. And Sarah Vailey actually replied. Here's a tweet from Ranger Fan Daniel says, Bruh, Frank Sarah Vailey, please explain. Sarah Vailey then actually replies, I think we're splitting hairs here. Official versus unofficial trade request. Is open to a move really all that different? Does it matter if the Rangers are equally open to a move because Georgiev may not be a unanimously well loved teammate? And so at this point, to me, it kind of looks like Sarah Vailey's starting to just split hairs, getting into the literal versus figurative difference between being open to a move and actually officially requesting a trade. Doesn't look like Yorgiev actually went out there and said to the Rangers, hey, please trade me, I'm unhappy where I am. But if the notion is that he would be okay with moving, and at the same time, if the Rangers are comfortable moving on from his services, that's why Cervelli felt it was necessary to publish his name in the trade article on Dilly Faceoff. Furthermore, the entire idea of Georgiev not being a well-liked teammate is brought up once again, which is really interesting to note how Cervelli's kind of bringing that point up several times here, because, I mean... Look, this guy's got NHL information leaking into his ears every day. It looks like he is one of the most tapped over NHL insiders in the environment right now. I don't know about you, but Sarah Bailey has really established credibility the past few days, especially considering the Seattle Kraken expansion. So if he's nailing that point down, that maybe Georgiev is not as well-liked of a teammate as you would think he would be, it is somewhat of a point of contention, I think, that is worth discussing. Furthermore, you have to remember that this isn't really the first time we've seen Georgiev in some form of a conflicting nature with teammates. He's part of the entire reason why Tony D'Angelo isn't on the team anymore. And I mean, look, Tony D'Angelo kind of dug his own grave several times, but getting into a fight with Georgiev was the straw that broke the camel's back, if not an absolute freight train dropping onto the camel's back, snapping its spine in half instantaneously instead. You could go either way. And so, talk to me in the comments what you think about this Alexander Georgiev situation right here. I, for one, would not be too surprised if it came out soon, sometime in the long-term future, where Georgiev says, Yeah, I kind of didn't want to be behind Shashurkin because, come on, I wanted to be the guy. I'm 25 years old. This guy's the same age as me. He's better. So he's going to be getting all the starts. And I was a guy who, at this point in my career, I thought I would probably be contending for number one status, maybe switching in a 1A, 1B scenario. But with Shashurkin being as good as he is, there's no chance of that happening in New York. So maybe that's why I'll request a trade. As for Rangers fans, man, hey, you guys got some pretty good goaltenders, I guess, backing you up in the crease there. If not Henrik Lundqvist, Igor Shashurkin was drafted in 2014. You've waited seven years for this guy. Enjoy him while it lasts. If you do end up trading Georgiev sometime down the line, if that ever does happen, then it would probably be best to temper your expectations a little bit, because as we said, Nedeljkovic was traded for Bernier and a third. That guy was a Calder finalist, and he was looking to be the next starter long-term for the Hurricanes, and now now he's in Detroit. So yeah, the going rate for young goaltenders, not really all too great right now. Talk to me in the comments what you think about this Georgiev thing, though I hope you enjoyed this video of Rolls 99.
and bye.